Greetings, my friends. This is Mark Hoverson in Phoenix, Arizona. And today we're going to talk about mobile engagement. And we have a very special guest. His name is Michael Rutherford in San Diego, California. And a little backstory on Michael. Over the last three years, Michael has generated with his team 100,000 separate mobile campaigns. And we're going to go into a little bit about what that means. And he's also, with his team, generated multiple millions in mobile commerce. So we're going to go into his mindset and what he knows that maybe we don't know and should know. And then we also have a fun little game at the end. So buckle up, sit tight, and without further ado, Michael, are you there? Hey, Mark, I'm here. How are you? Glad to be with you. I've never been better. So let's get right into the good stuff. You're a leader in Ripplin. We're going to talk about Ripplin in a moment, but deeper than that, um, just tell us, what is mobile engagement? That's a great question. It's, it, what's interesting about it is everybody is always curious, you know, the mechanics and the specifics behind what mobile engagement is. And, you know, everybody's noticing that the world has gone mobile. They've noticed everybody has got their faces in their cell phones. And uh, what's interesting, we've, uh, you know, kind of adopted a tagline of go where the eyeballs are, because if you can find the eyeballs, you can find people's attention. Mm -hmm. And whether you're an advertiser trying to reach customers, uh, you can't market to where their eyes used to be. You have to market to where their eyeballs are today. If you're a mom trying to reach your kids, uh, and if there's any moms watching this, I'm sure there are, you've noticed if you want to reach your kids, you've got to reach them on their mobile phone. So uh, mobile engagement is really connecting with people on the one device they have on them absolutely all the time, which is their mobile phone. Yeah, and you sent me an image, which I think is pretty telling from the difference in a big social event at 2005, a historic event, versus 2013. What does this picture mean to you? Because you've actually monetized the mobile engagement. Well, what is this? When you see this, what do you, how do you observe this picture and what does it mean to you? It means that really a few things. One of the main things is it is it um, it means the switch or the transformation that's take place on how people perceive the world, how they get news, how they connect with their friends, how they do life has absolutely radically changed. And people in today's world don't spend time on their laptops like they used to. They don't read newspapers like they used to. They don't they don't experience life like they used to. They're taking mm -hmm. pictures with their cell phones. They are checking in on Facebook with their cell phones. They are tweeting their friends from their cell phones. They're capturing life's moments with their cell phones. And what's so funny is on the top picture, you see one yeah. cell phone. <laughs> I'm, just uh, eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. And she, <laughs> you know, there was the early adopter, you know, like who's that wild James Bond like person <laughs> catching this? Think, think about a cell phone with a camera on it eight years ago. What a, what a wild west, um, you know, early adopter today, that was probably like a chocolate razor, by the way. But today, look at the bottom photo. Everybody and their brother, I don't care if they're eight years old or 88 years old, they've got a mobile phone. I like it. So let's get to the second question. And again, everybody, stay tuned because we do have an interesting little game to play. So my next question is, do you think this mobile frenzy of constantly checking our phones, almost to probably addiction levels at some times, but do you think it's just a phase is it just a phase? Is it a temporary thing where it's dying down or it's going to fizzle out? Or what, what do you feel? It's, uh, it's interesting to learn when you dive into the, to the, I guess, the deep stuff, the thick stuff, when it comes to mobile, you start peeling back layers. And on the surface, it definitely feels like a fad because of how quickly it's happened. Right. The mobile adoption happens so much faster than the web adoption of people getting on their computers. In other words, when Microsoft and Apple really first came out, and people got a computer for the very first time. It took a long time mm -hmm. for just the average and ordinary wage earner in the world to have a mobile phone, but the adoption of mobile or to have a computer, but the adoption of mobile has been so much more rapid and you've got places around the world where they never got a computer, but they do have a mobile phone. And because of that fact, what we're seeing is the convergence of all other mediums moving onto the mobile phone. And what I mean by that is, People are using their phones to do things that they used to do with other devices. I mean, just think about it. If you've got your phone on, you think about there's so many things that we do with our phones today that we used to use another device for. 
Yes. And the, what I'm what I'm getting to is people get news from their phones where they used to get news from the television or the radio. Mm-hmm. They get deals and discounts of uh, you know from from businesses or restaurants and things nowadays from their mobile phone. The phone has really become the Swiss Army knife of somebody's life. It's not just you know this hokey little place where people can chat with their friends. It really has become a tool that has influenced every area of you know every area of their life. So. So what you would say is, you know, and this is kind of a comical little picture that 20 years later and all these things fit in your pocket (laughs) and you've got, you know, you've got the video camera you have. And we had one of these. I remember in the 80s, we got one and we thought it was the coolest thing ever. And we'd carry it around in a big suitcase to our basketball games and, and radios and things like that. And now, you know, so to the question, is this a phase, um, what's actually happening now is that the the mobile phone is literally becoming the Swiss Army knife? It's it's actually increasing usage, and with apps, more and more things are folding into it um, from health, augmented health devices that you plug in, and you can get diabetes readings, you can do breathalyzer things, you can do um, blood work. I mean, it's crazy what is happening. Actually, more things are rolling into the to the cell phone and into the mobile thing than we even thought at the start. So I don't think you think it's a phase is what I what I gathered from that. I think it sounds like it's a velocity that's picking up. Yeah, there's there's no question. And one of the uniquenesses too is when people talk about you know phases and fads, they're you know very flighty. They're kind of here you know here today mm-hmm. gone tomorrow. One of the uniquenesses about mobile is so many people's everyday lives, not just aspects of their lives, but everyday aspects of their lives. I mean, many of them, most of their lives have become so uh, integrated into their phone or their phone has been integrated so much into their lives. Uh, it would, you would almost have to alter every hour of your day to not use your mobile phone because we've become so reflexive and so dependent upon it. It's crazy. I've never seen a device do that in history. Well, it's, I mean, it's blowing everybody's minds the deeper you go into this. So, so you are what I would call a super splasher in the ripple. You're all over the world. Your ripple is, you know, waving across to so many different countries. And, and you know, you are very committed and in love with the vision of Ripplin. So my question would be, what do you like best about the ripple effect? And then we're going to throw out a challenge to all our viewers. And I think it's, we're going to have a little bit of fun with it in the comments below. But what do you like best? about the ripple effect since we kicked this project off and really began uh, the pre-release of the community one of the most exciting experiences for me there's there's really i guess two main ones uh, the first of which being uh, watching just watching us connect the globe on mm-hmm. one community uh, with one conversation with one change to the way that people see the world i've watched just in the first three or four days of this conversation being spread around the world. I've watched people from, I'm looking at my screen on another laptop right now. Uh, we've got hundreds of people in Ethiopia connected into the rippling conversation, which started in Dallas, Texas, literally just days ago, but I've watched it already ripple out into Ethiopia in Israel. I mean, we've got people, I'm not kidding in Iceland, Greenland, Sri Lanka, uh, places that I didn't even know were, I know there were countries, but places I didn't even know were countries, the teeniest little islands, um, you know, in French Polynesia have dozens of people in the ripple. So how quickly, the, I mean, by design and by definition, how quickly the ripple effect has already touched and brought together all four corners of the world. That's amazing. And that there, there, there's a story where it ties to you. That's what I think, just the gamification of Ripplin the simple game of watching the social connectivity and the fact that the tech companies, in terms of vision, the tech companies know that you, your influence is that powerful, Michael. And up until now, they're the only ones who harvest it, right? So Ripplin is literally restructuring the way tech companies operate. And I, I think it's a very exciting conversation. So number one is that you love just the connectivity and watching it grow from a just a, a, a viewer standpoint, what's the second thing you were going to say? You kind of hit the nail on the head, which is there's a story behind every ripple that's been caused. So whether it's my personal ripple of people that have built around the world and really wrapped the whole globe a bunch of times over, 
it's the individual stories of how those things happen. Like I've got a great friend of mine I've known for years uh, who, if you'd have told me nine, you know, 10, 12, 15 days ago that he'd have a ripple of thousands of people, hundreds of them in Norway, hundreds of them in Spain, hundreds of them in Russia, I would have told you you were crazy. Right. So I'm watching a, my great friend of mine uh, introduce it to a couple of his friends from church. I mean, he's never done anything like He's never done anything like this. So when I say like this, I mean built a global audience. That's right. what I mean by never done anything like this. He's never built an audience of people that stretched the globe or you know connected all the continents and made them almost like one community, one one yeah. family, one cloth. And yeah. as you watch these stories unfold, just his ripple alone has spread all over the globe. And every individual new new little icon on the map, as it starts you know just populating yeah. all over the world. Every one of those has got not just a story behind it, multiple stories behind it because of how he introduced it to his friends at church yeah. and how his friends at church introduced it to his brother and his brother referred it to his old friend he used to grow up with in, uh, in the Ukraine and how he referred it to his buddy he used to play soccer with in Norway. Yeah. It naturally yeah. and organically has grown yeah. like that. So this, that's been fun for me. The stories that I know, I mean, there are thousands. We have hundreds of thousands of people in the Ripple and the stories are hilarious. Like literally two Ripples down from me there was a there's a, a event promoter who's friends with Scotty Pippen, the NBA All Star legend. You know Michael Jordan's teammate Scotty Pippen, and he sends me. I find out he's in my ripple, and he sends me a picture of him and Scotty Pippen, and it's just so funny because you know I grew up watching Scotty Pippen, and you know these stories are just colossal. So here's the challenge that we want to end with everybody. Michael and I want to do a challenge. In in the Facebook comments below. We want you to think of three devices that you used to use individually, like a flashlight that they, you used to hold individually, but are now integrated into your phone that you've used in the last 30 days, and simply comment below what they've been. So here's a couple examples, like in my life, I've used, I use the flashlight at night, that it used to be its own thing, camera, um, I listen to my Spotify app, so radio, Michael mentioned the map. I use the calculator daily. I use the alarm clock this morning, watch to tell time, and then used to have a big physical Nintendo, but now I play games on my phone. So we want to see below how many in the last 30 days, single devices, just think in your mind, have you used? Michael, what are a couple that you, that you use on a, you know, in the last 30 days or on, a, on an almost daily basis? I, I was afraid you might ask me that, so I pulled my phone up. One of the ones... Uh, well, several of the ones. My wife just booked airline tickets on Southwest to fly up to Portland, and uh, Southwest Airlines app gets a lot of action on my phone. Wow. Um, even just my clock. I love brownies. Uh, yeah. Maybe that'll tell you something about me. I've got a sweet tooth. <laughs> and I always use my, not just my alarm clock, but my stopwatch, my timer. <laughs> Steve. I use all of those. I have Pinterest on my phone where we get fun recipes. As a That's kind of like things. magazines almost <laughs> that used to be magazines are now apps it's crazy what's yeah, your favorite what's your favorite thing on your phone what's your favorite favorite old use that's now integrated in your phone number one one oh i mean probably the funniest one that i i mean i'm a movie buff i go see every movie that comes out the minute that it comes out so i have an app called fandango on my mm -hmm. phone where i always go and find out what movie times are playing and what you used to have to do if you remember this was either go get the Sunday newspaper and look up the times oh, I do. or call the 800 number and listen to the recording <laughs> oh, of I... what movies were playing. Now you can just pop it up on your phone and uh, find out everything. So that exists for golf tee times. That exists for flights. I mean, you name it. I love it. All right. So to everybody who has watched this interview, Michael, thank you so much. Wealth of wisdom, great energy. And here's what we want to do now. We heard from Michael and now we want to hear from you. So below... The challenge, which is kind of the game, is to think of at least three devices that you used to use individually and in the last 30 days have now been integrated into your phone. It can be the old Nintendo's watch, clock, flashlight, video camera, camera, radio, maps, newspapers, magazines, and think of some crazy ones. But we'd love to see the comments below. Please share and like this video and spread it and let's keep rippling. <laughs>